Hello. <laughs> Hello, this is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. Today we're gonna do EFT, electronic funds transfer training for end users. This video won't talk much about the setup. It'll talk about how as a user, you can set your payment methods, do the actual EFT file. I'll run you through all the steps to get the vendors configured and then also how to generate the file, how to regenerate a file and talk about all those details. You can support me at battleshipcobra.com. I don't make any money off of these YouTube videos. Check out battleshipcobra.com. I have an SQL for SAP Business One course and I have a Crystal Reports for SAP Business One course. If you go to my website, battleshipcobra.com, you can buy me a drink, give me a small donation, or you can go from my links there. The, the links there will get you 50% off the cost of the course and the revenue goes directly to me. If you could please not discount, that's really nice because if you discount, then Udemy takes it as... I'm also going to be doing a podcast for you guys. Uh, I'm a huge podcast fan. I'm going to do a 30, 45 minute podcast. So look for that at podcast.battleshipcobra.com. And um, that's it. So today we're going to get into the EFT file training for end users. Let's get going. If you're on a version of SAP Business One other than 9.3, you need to make sure you have the SAP add-on for payments installed. Currently, I'm on the 9.3 system and I just have this running just to illustrate that if you are on 9.2, 9.1, 9.0, 8.8, you have to have this running in order to see the bank file button that I'm going to be talking about. Modules, Administration, Add-ons, Add-on Manager. It's going to show you if it's running or not. So you need it connected. So as mentioned in 9.3, it's built in. Another reason to upgrade to 9.3. <clears throat> the whole system is run through the payment methods. Administration, Setup, Banking, Payment Methods. This is where everything is assigned here. So I have a Canadian EFT. I think I have a few in here. And you want to do a couple of things. So, you know, if I did your installation or if somebody did your installation, they should select it that it's a bank transfer. Set up the house bank account's going to use. And in this case, use a currency selection. Typically, and especially like within Canada for this particular file, you don't want to mix currencies. I know that some international file formats potentially would let you mix currencies. In this case, we're not going to. You want to assign the file format here. So this one's clearly labeled CPA 1464. Click this choose from list. This is kind of confusing because it doesn't give you like an edit. You can click new and you'll see the file formats. If you want to download, uh, in, you know, this is my custom one, right click, download format, or you can assign it from here, update it. These ones are the default SAP ones. I have no clue what they do, but this is my custom one. Put that in there. Make sure you have a currency selection, anything else you want to do. So you can post to a GL interim account. If you want it to go to an interim account, you can use all these other options. But fundamentally, you have to do this. That's the first step. You have to have a payment method. So that again, modules, administration, setup, banking, payment methods. Second, let's just go to vendor number one. Payment run. So I have a whole bunch here. I just used the EFT one. It needs to be, click on it like this, set as default and included. If you will do mixes of payment methods, you can check more than one. Checking more than one will allow you to select, but the default one is the one that's going to be used. So yes, yeah, sometimes you send checks, Okay, that's good, but most of the time you pay by EFT. All right, so we're gonna do that. And that's how you're gonna set it up. So now you're gonna notice in purchasing AP invoice, if you select vendor number one, it's gonna choose a posting date, accounting. 
You're gonna see here the default payment method is our EFT. I don't have any other payment method, so I'm not gonna switch it here. It's just gonna to default to the one that we set. So as that defaults, that is what sets everything up for the next step. The only way to generate a, a bank file for EFT payments is the payment wizard, banking payment wizard. That's it. There's only one way to do it. Even if you can do one payment, you have to go through the payment wizard. Payment wizard is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to just detail a couple of things and then everything else you can kind of figure out by yourself. So next, start a new one. We're going to do a bank transfer. You could pick a different numbering series for your outgoing payments, etc. You want to add all of your guys to the list. Next, you can select other things there. I'm just gonna say for today, up to today, you can like age it for a week or do specific things to do uh, payment runs, etc. Fundamentally, you're setting up basically an aging report that you're gonna be able to select uh, payments from. You can see in this range, all that I have is the EFT payment method. So I'll check that. You can mix them and you can make some checks and some EFT. I, I find that to be not the best way to do it because it gets confusing. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick the one I want to EFT, especially if you're gonna generate a file, you, you don't wanna like confuse things in here. So this is gonna go through and it's gonna pick all of the vendors that have that particular payment method on documents that you're gonna pay and you can, of course, make this bigger here. You can go view, fit column widths. You can expand it. You could do everything that you can do on a regular outgoing payment here. I'm missing a lot of columns. I could probably clean this up as well, but you can see payment method, how much you're gonna pay. You can modify if you're gonna partially pay. You can do all sorts of things. So. I'm gonna uncheck this, I'm gonna uncheck this and this. I'm just gonna do a couple of payments here. Another thing to add to this particular page is uh, missing payments or non-included transactions. So non-included transactions, really interesting here. You can go and you can see that there are specific payments in here that aren't included because of these various reasons. There are so many in this particular example, but it's very clear what you have to do. You have to go to that business partner, assign a payment method as default, and then in certain cases, in certain versions, you have to actually go to these particular documents and set under the tab that they're linked to that particular payment method. So the accounting tab, you go open up the document and check that. Once you're ready here, um, you can go ahead and click next. I want to mention this too, because this is a nice option in the newer versions of the system. You can execute a payment order run, and this will just prepare a payment order run so you can do manual reporting on it. And then you can say print it, and if you had B1 up, you can just do an automatic mailing of an email approval report, get B1 up, it's awesome. Um, or you could manually PDF them, put them in an email and then send them to somebody for approval or somebody can approve them in the system. Typically before you just issue a large EFT payment, some sort of process has to be done. The payment order run is a good way to do it without actually creating the final payment. So you can click there, click next. Payment wizard is saved as a payment run. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna do it directly, you can just execute the payment run as that step. I'm just gonna show you really quickly with the payment order run. So you can see this has just done this, it's prepared it. You can do these payment method summaries, all these ways of printing, print preview. In this case, I'm just gonna finish for now. You can look at the payment orders for outgoing payments, and you can see the two here for the two different vendors. Um, you can highlight them and you can print them out. I also have a crystal report that will just read open payment orders 
and um, you can do it by payment method and just print it and have somebody sign off on that. If you want that, just uh, connect with me on linkedin.battleshipcobra.com or uh, just put a message in the comments, I guess, and I'll just try and link it up there if you want it, okay? Once that's all been approved, you wanna come back or another user is gonna come back, go to the payment wizard. Next, load, save, payment, run. You can see that number of payments have been made, zero. It hasn't been done. So payment order run. You can just go to the final step. Next, review what you're gonna pay and execute. Okay, the most common reason why it fails and it'll oftentimes fail without giving you a very specific error. It'll just say fail to run the payment wizard. You have not entered the banking information for the business partner. So let's just quickly go back to that business partner. Vendor number one. So payment terms in this one. Uh, Bank of Canada, and I've set up an account code and a branch transit. This is all that I need for my particular bank, uh, for the bank here. So we're going to have uh, account one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. And this is all you need for the CPA 1464 layout that I'm using. So you might need more, you might need less. Um, but that is the most common reason why your payment, uh, payment wizard will fail. So this makes the bank transfer outgoing payments. If you look at the outgoing payments, it'll be the last two payments in the list. From here, if you do not have B1 up, you have to go to the payment, to the outgoing payments, modules, banking, outgoing payment, outgoing payments, go to the last data record. You have to go through these and you have to email them manually. That's it. You don't have another choice. If you get B1 up, you can send them in a bulk. Uh, you can send them, send the payment advice documents telling each one of the vendors how much you're paying and for what you're paying with an included PDF all automatically based on this payment wizard run. You need B1 up, you need print delivery. So you see a trend happening here. SAP can't do it out of the box, okay? So first we're gonna make the file and then I'll show you the B1 up way of emailing the payment advice files. So I'm going to click bank file, create files. It's gonna run through and do a test run. Create the file, so that says, okay, that's good. It makes the files, that's it. So there's the created file. So I'm going to go to C temp here. Boom, here's your file, vendor one, vendor two. Everything's all blank. Boom, the file is exactly how it needs to be. And this is the file that you can upload to your bank. You can modify the path here if you want it to go somewhere else. But that file in this location is what you're going to use in order to upload to your bank. So what happens if something went wrong or you got the wrong bank or something happened, you need to recreate the file. Payment wizard, next, load, saved payment run, view executed payment run, click this, go to final step, next. See bank file is, is grayed out. Oh no, we lost it, there's no way to do it, no. Click recreate file. Da da da. It's gonna go through again. If you got like a missing, some missing, missing, some missing bank account information, whatever your bank says was missing, maybe the file format was screwed up and you need to get it fixed or something like that. To remake the file, you just recreate the file. Push yes. It goes to the opex table, which is just the table that they use to do the bank account stuff. And then your bank file is is good to go again. You can just run through create files. Just click through that until it is done. If you're lucky enough or fortunate enough to have B1 up and to have me as a consultant, I will add this little button here, email payment advice. It's technically advice, um, and I screwed up, I should have called it that, but it's advice. 
Or I will add this little menu button here and you can click the menu button. Boom, payment advice. Click it. There's two to send to vendors. It automatically has the wording for you. The wording will be something like this. So dear person's name, we have an EFT payment on your account attached is blah, 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 default contact person. And I'm going to send through exchange. Typically I'll send that through exchange, but um, so this will word everything like this automatically for you. It'll attach a PDF of the type that you want and boom, it'll send right through your exchange without having to have middleware software. Um, you could be working remotely and it'll still appear in your Outlook locally. Uh, it's really cool. So that is uh, how easy it would be if you were going to use B1Up. So that is it. That is my training on the EFT end user capabilities for SAP Business One for EFT files. Thank you guys very much. If you have any questions, please leave the comments or questions in the link below. If you have any other questions for me, you can go to linkedin.battleshipcobra.com, add me there. Anything else you need regarding me, Mike Taylor, aka Battleship Cobra, go to battleshipcobra.com. I have a podcast. I have Udemy courses on Crystal Reports and SQL queries. Um, I'm doing some live stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, if you want to donate, you can go to donate.battleshipcobra.com if you feel like it. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you next time.